Hey, I'm James from Soaking Dad Barbecue, and spring is just around the corner, so that means two things. It is the perfect time to do some spring cleaning and maintenance on your Kamado Joe, and I can lose some winter plaid layers. <sighs> you know what? Maybe even one more. Well, maybe a little bit too soon. I might need that other one back. Let's get started. Mother Nature and or a couple months in storage can be unkind to your Kamado Joe. So today I'm going to cover three things. First, we're going to do a mechanical uh, overview, make sure all our bands and everything is tight and good working order. We don't run into any problems with things shifting out of alignment as we get ready to ramp up our cooks for spring and summer season. Next, we want to make sure that our Joe looks good as new. Well, this one looks good as new because it is new. So I'm going to show you how to make it look brand new using my older Kamado Joe Big Joe Series 3 before it goes off to its new home. If you haven't caught uh, any of those updates, I am doing some testing with one of the nation's top universities to prove a little bit more of what's going on inside of our Kamados. And they needed one for this a series of tests that I'll be ready to share a little bit later in the year. But since we want that looking nice and spick and span, it is the perfect subject to bring the outside back to life. And last but not least, uh, we'll go over everything inside your Joe to make sure that that is an in perfect working order. So without further ado, let's get started on everything mechanical to make sure that our dome bands, hinges, and assemblies are in perfect working order and ready to go for spring. So the first thing that we're gonna check is these six bolts on each side. I, I forgot to mention while we're doing that, this is also a great time to remove your control tower top if that's something that you want to clean. Just make sure that you lift straight up and don't put any side force on it to stress the ceramic vent cap. And I'm gonna use a mild dish soap, something like Dawn Power Spray is what we have in the house, and just leave that while we are working on the outside of our Kamado Joe. And by the time we're all done, we go uh, rinse that off with some hot water. Uh, we'll make that look years newer than it does at the moment. So using a half inch uh, wrench, I'm just going to check the tightness on all of my airlift hinge bolts. And actually looks like I've done a pretty good job as there is not much here, maybe a quarter turn on so far. Oh, this one needed some. So we had three bolts needing a quarter turn and a half turn. Let's go check the other side. So far, so good on the left side here. Similar quarter to a half turn on a few, and that's it. Next up, we want to check our airlift hinge band uh, assembly. So this is what is tightening the bands and will prevent our dome from slipping out and removing around. So let me grab that wrench. So this is the included hardware when you first unbox your Kamado Joe. So let's uh, see how we're doing for tightness here. And spring and fall, or when you change your furnace filter, is a perfect time to check this, as it looks like I'm getting mm, a couple turns, and I'm going hand tightness. These don't really give you a foot-pounds per torque, but I always just go with uh, sort of as tight as is comfortable with your hands. And having done some stress tests, you're not going to crack the dome with the strength of your hands. So that looks good on our top band. Got a couple turns. Same thing on our bottom. So now that we've got our bands tight, I can also see here that my airlift hinge is sitting flat. Uh, because we've continued to keep everything tight, this hasn't started to slip. If you see sometimes uh, in the closed position, your airlift hinge is starting to look like this. I've got a dome realignment video, so I won't uh, go into repeating all that, but it goes through sort of how to reset your complete dome alignment and fix any overbite, underbite, left, right alignment and or latch issues. But when I close that, mine is sitting perfectly flat. So I know we are in good working order, which is part of the advantage of uh, keeping these tight. Now that this is in good working order, let's go calibrate our dome temperature gauge. So even if you don't live in a climate like mine where we go from sub-zero freezing temperatures to <laughs> I guess normal temperatures uh, in summer, even just cooking many, many cycles of warming up and cooling off, uh, our temperature gauge is made of metal. It expands and contracts. And over time, that can work its way out of calibration by you know sort of upwards of 30, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And if that starts to happen, and I see all the posts sort of online or people asking questions, you know, why is my cook taking longer? I was set to 250 degrees. Well, there's a big difference if you think you're set at 250 degrees and you're actually at 
210 or perhaps you know a pushing 300 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a really big difference between 210 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, like our bands, spring and fall is a great time to check that. So let's pop open our dome, remove the wing nut that's on the back of our temperature gauge here so we can slide that out, remove our gauge. To calibrate our temperature gauge, I've just brought some water up to a rolling boil. I'm using some high heat gloves uh, along with some latex uh, so that the water doesn't uh, pass through and end up burning me in the process. So what we're looking for here is to bring our temperature gauge exactly to 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. The 100 uh, line is just a little bit easier to see. Um, and since it's on all gauges, whether you're in Celsius or Fahrenheit, I find that's the easiest one to go for. If you're at a, a significant elevation, obviously adjust based off of uh, your elevation. To do that uh, adjustment on the back, we just have a standard uh, slot flat screwdriver and we can make adjustments left right until we get 100 degrees uh, celsius on our gauge let's check where we're at so it looks like i am at 200 degrees fahrenheit or a little bit lower so i need to make about a 15 degree fahrenheit adjustment let's check again on the back so uh lefty loosey on our set screw on the back is what increases the temperature righty tighty is going to uh, reduce the temperature. Let's see where we're at right now. I think we are right at it. Looking straight down, that was right at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Take advantage of the steam, help clean off any weather elements, and go get this back on. Drop in and refasten our hardware. While we're here, now is a good time to check if you have an airlift hinge, the spring of our airlift hinge. I like my dome so that if I leave it, it just starts to fall a little bit versus continuing to rise. I know I'm super zoomed in here, but if I were to let go, which I've done, and you were to see your airlift hinge continue to rise like this, that's gonna give us trouble for our jotisserie getting a good seal. So I like the hinge just to fall a little bit. And since mine is perfect, I don't need to make any adjustments, but using that three quarter inch wrench, this is where you would either tighten your uh, hinge to provide more airlift uh, assistance and or back that off a little bit to have your dome start to collapse. And again, I think the perfect amount is an, about an inch, half inch to an inch drop when you let go of your dome. Since that's all good, let's move on. So I've just brought our control tower back out after washing that with mild dish soap. And as you can see, there's now uh, easy assembly on our slide mechanism. And if we were to slide this out, what you wanna get is any grease or residue that is on the aluminum or the cast aluminum parts here. And that's an important part. If you're coming from a daisy wheel or a big green egg like I have where this is made out of cast iron, this is cast aluminum. So uh, in the past, you could just toss cast iron into your grill and that would clean it and you'd re-season it. If you do that, you're going to lose the paint as well as the white marking. So a mild dish soap is the best way to do that. But now that our control tower top is uh, in tip top shape, let's get it reinstalled like so, drop right on. And the last mechanical element before we move to cleaning our dome is to check our bands. And so just using your finger run along and do a little lift and see if your gasket is at all unstuck. If it is unstuck, this is an easy fix by putting a little bit of high heat silicone, uh, Permatex Gold, I believe, is rated for 300 degrees Celsius, 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and that is uh, going to allow you to re-glue your gasket uh, top and bottom, just pulling along. I think mine is fine since I've recently fixed that. Fix it before you do much cooks, because without it attached, the band will uh, start to shrink or the gasket will start to shrink. As soon as it is inside your grill and exposed to any heat, it will really shrink up and you'll never get it back into this position without having to go buy a brand new gasket. So a couple bucks on Amazon, uh, it's worth stocking that in your house if you ever need to do a quick fix. Mine looks in good shape, so let's move on to cleaning our outside. So there's no real right way, wrong way to tackle this, but the little black pitting that you get or the grease marks running most commonly around the back of your dome and or this sort of weathered in grease. Uh, you can remove this with just pure <laughs> willpower and time. I found though, uh, I prefer the simplicity. So using an organic 
degreaser, something like Simple Green. It doesn't have to be a uh, Simple Green. This is not sponsored by Simple Green. I just know uh, that it works. So pick this up at Home Depot, Amazon, whatever you like, so long as it's organic. I want organic as it is not going to act as a solvent and start to unglue things like our gasket material or do any other damage to our components. So uh, the other thing that uh, makes this a breeze is speaking of Amazon, I picked up these uh, drill bit accessory discs. So these are just bristles that are on a drill that'll give me a little bit more scrubbing power than having to do this all by hand. Again, uh, the most affordable option here is you can do this with just muscle power. Uh, I'm gonna go for power tools and convenience because that sounds more fun. So to get started, uh, spray a little bit of Simple Green on. And before it drips all the way down, I'm gonna hit it with the uh, scrub brush. So the lighting isn't amazing, but I'm hoping you can see a bit of our before and after uh, scrub on, wax on, wax off lines on either side here where I've done a single pass down the middle and it has pulled out some of these black grimy spots uh, as well as that baked on grease near the top of our control tower. So I'll go back to fast forward and join you in about five minutes time is what this uh, should take to get the rest of our dome clean and looking good as new. Well, just like that in about five minutes time, my four or five years actually now old Komodo Joe Big Joe Series 3 is looking as good before it gets sent off as a brand new one. So that Simple Green does an amazing uh, trick, even on the nuts and bolts, if you wanna spend more time, but if I show you what we started off tightening the bolts versus where we finished our airlift hinge, things look remarkably better. Nearly, I would say, good as new. So now that our outside looks significantly better, let's get to work on cleaning out the inside and getting ready for a whole fresh season of grilling and smoking inside of our Kamado Joe. So since I've already removed my multi-piece firebox in order to make this lighter for lifting out of the table and installing my new one, I've just cleaned out the inside. But if I show you some footage uh, where I did an experiment last summer over six months with my Komodo Joe Big Joe Series 1, just to test how much ash gets built up and stuck underneath the stock uh, collector system. Now, this is not a knock on the stock collector system. It is light years ahead of almost any other Kamado I have ever tested uh, in this regard. And I'll use the Golden's cast iron, which is just off camera uh, to the side. I haven't done my giveaway yet. If you wanna be a part of that, make sure you sign up for my newsletter on my website, smokingdadbarbecue.com to be a part of that as I'll be giving it away. But it does not have an ash removal system. And so it's like a flashback in time to 15, 20 years ago when I started cooking on Kamados before uh, Kamado Joe was even a company and you had to get a little rake or an ash pan tool and try and fush and guess your way around in the dark to get as much of that ash uh, out. And so the stock uh, wing system is eons better than this. But I found I don't like doing the multi-piece firebox uh, over and over. It's the type of thing that once you do it once or twice, uh, you can, you'd prefer to leave it, or at least I prefer to leave it as long as possible. And since using a leaf blower or something like that will blow ash all over the place and put a fresh coat of dust on what we've just cleaned and or same with my shop back, which even with a filter uh, in that blows dust everywhere uh, out the back and again, we'll cover this. I prefer a more manual solution. So nothing wrong with the uh, stock Kamado Joe system. There's that old saying our kids used to listen to a song when they were little, uh, try it, you might like it. Give it a try. If you've not tried setting up your Joe with the stock system and the wings, it works great. For me, I prefer uh, going with the Kickash basket um, and the Kickash can solution as every time that I use my Joe, I'm able to get 100% of that ash out and I don't have that buildup that very quickly piles up over uh, even just a short period of time, like six months of use. So to each their own, that's just my personal preference. And I found that works really well when adding wood chips, wood chunks, uh, and maybe it's a bit of an insulator or things like that, but the wood combusts almost immediately. And since I wanna get even better smoking results outside of my Kamado Joe, that's James's personal decision. Feel free to try whatever's right for you. But now that we've got everything reinstalled and ready to go, let's do a bit of a clean burn. So a note on clean burns. This is something that uh, I was asked so uh, many times to do that a couple years ago, I did a clean burn video on how to turn your ceramics back to white. But in case you skip the beginning of that, this is not without our risk. So the recommended temperatures uh, for a Kamado Joe is 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Anytime that we are exceeding those recommended temperatures, we are potentially uh, putting risk and stress on everything from our multi-piece firebox to our base, 
to our dome, to our gaskets, to even uh, things like our temperature gauge and or our control tower top, The if you have one of the older ones with the paint on the inside, that can destroy many things. So the pursuit of getting a nice white, clean looking brand new Kamado uh, is not with its risk. And I don't uh, you know, recommend it. Where a clean burn comes in uh, really handy is if uh, you've got some mold and bacteria that have built up, particularly if it's been under a cover and everything has been sealed shut, just like I have it here with no uh, air. So instead you wanna unlatch your airlift hinge, leave your bottom vent open and your top vent open to prevent any of that uh, mold from building up. And a 600 to 700 degree fire is going to be more than sufficient. If you rotate in cooks like pizza or a steak and a sear, you'll never find yourself uh, in a position where you need to do a clean burn. But where you will uh, get yourself into a bit of a, a need for a clean burn is if you do repeated low and slow cooks, particularly if you don't have a drip pan or things like that, and the fats and the oils from pork shoulders ribs, brisket, start to pile up, they collect and soak in your ceramics. You might think you're getting smoke from your smoking wood, but often if you go to crank the temperature, all of a sudden your Kamado will start billowing white smoke. This is from all those fats and oils sitting in the bottom of your firebox. And there was once I had guests over for a pizza and I hadn't even been keeping track of how many low and slow cooks that I wanted to do. And it took 40 minutes of looking like Thomas the train with like white smoke coming out like a like locomotive before I could put anything like pizza dough on here without getting a bad taste. And so if you're not gonna cycle through those type of cooks often enough, a clean burn is a great way to do that, which is exactly what I'm gonna do today. So let's add some charcoal, fire it up. Okay, we've got everything fired up and I'll show you uh, before inside of our grill as well as after in terms of the clean burn. I'm really here uh, just after again, getting any of those fats and oils as this is going off to a lab, as I mentioned earlier, for some tests. I don't want anything like that throwing off the uh, interesting research that's going to be going on uh, to help sort of demystify some of the science behind smoking and great results, what goes on uh, inside of a, a Kamado Joe. I wanna shine some light uh, on that, not just Kamado Joe, uh, all sorts of uh, popular Kamados. So if uh, you were doing this a clean burn, a couple other questions that come up. What about my deflectors? As well as what about things like the soapstone? So I don't have my deflectors here, as again, I wanna get sort of all of the uh, oils outside of the base as well as my dome and my multi-piece firebox. But if you were to install those on the X accessory ring, uh, five, 600 degrees for about 40 minutes or so should be enough to turn those white if they are sitting down close to the fire. You can even flip them, uh, sort of do another 30, 40 minutes on the other side if you want to do that. I use mine in the uh, Dojo accessory and they come out white uh, all the time. So I'm not uh, needing to do that today as they look good. Uh, and the same thing is true for the the soapstone accessory. My sort of go-to, since that's always in there for something like a reverse sear, is I put it in when I first start cooking, uh, so maybe 250, 270 degrees, and then I crank the heat up to uh, a surface temperature on the soapstone around 650 to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And as long as every other cook, I just keep flipping the soapstone, I never uh, need to clean it. But if you uh, find yourself with some gunk built up that you just can't get off, uh, the same 600 to 700 degree fire will be more than sufficient to remove any organic food matter. Nothing will survive those sorts of temperatures uh, and you'll be good to go. If you have any other questions I didn't cover today, feel free to join one of my next uh, upcoming member lives where I go live one-on-one, -on -one, can answer questions in a real-time format versus these pre-recorded videos. Otherwise, that's it for today. I'm James from Smoking Ad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to, fire it up. 